Hi, in this video, as you can see, we're going to look at the duration of a portfolio of assets. What I mean by a portfolio of assets is a, 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 a group of uh, or an account that has different types of, of, of uh, investments in the one account, though. So uh, even though there are different types of bonds, say, maybe three-year bonds or five-year bonds, they're all in the same account. So they make up the portfolio of assets. So that's what I mean by a portfolio of assets, and we're going to talk about how to calculate the duration of, uh, of a portfolio of assets in this example. So here's the specific example. Let's say that our portfolio of assets has three types of bonds with the following characteristics. Bond A has a price of 2000 and a Macaulay duration of 9.5. Bond B has a price of 3000 and a Macaulay duration of 9. And Bond C has a price of 5000 with a Macaulay duration of 16. Um, all the prices and Macaulay durations have to be at the same interest rate so that we're comparing apples to apples. So in this case, I'm saying they're all at a 6% interest rate. Now, what would be the Macaulay duration of the portfolio at that 6% interest rate? Now, you might look at that and say, oh, well, uh, it's, and this would be natural. You're saying, oh, well, the Macaulay durations of the, of the bonds that make up the portfolio are 9.5, 9, and 16. And so you should be thinking we're going to have to use some sort of weighted average between those values uh, to get what the Macaulay duration of the portfolio is and that's that's exactly you're right on track with that line uh, of reasoning okay so let me kind of derive uh, derive the formula for you and then I'll get to the punchline so the Macaulay duration the form formula for the Macaulay duration is this but I'd rather you think of it as you know this process that you're going through uh, to, to calculate a numerator and, a, and the denominator. The denominator is just present value of all the payments. The numerator is the present value of uh, uh, take the time of the payment times the amount of the payment and then take the present value. Add those up in the numerator. Okay, so now I'm going to do this for the entire portfolio. So I'm going to put in a subscript here on these, on these expressions of a, of a PF for the portfolio. PF is representing portfolio. So what I'm saying is in the numerator, you're going to go through this process for the portfolio. And in the denominator, you're going to go through and calculate just the present value of all the payments in the portfolio. Well, in the denominator, that's just going to give you the total price of the entire portfolio. So uh, in the denominator, I'm going to use a cap P with a subscript PF for the price of the portfolio. Then in the numerator, I'm going through this process in the numerator for all the, uh, all, all the payments in the portfolio. So what I'll do is I'll peel off the payments that are associated to bond A and, and write that as, as this expression with a subscript uh, uh, cap A. And then peel off the payments that are associated to bond B and go through that process in the numerator for that, you know, multiply the time of the payment times the payment amount and discount it for those payments in that are associated to bond B and then do the same thing for bond C. And, and so what I'm saying on the numerator in this last expression is just go through the expression, but peel off the, peel off the payments associated to, to bond A, uh, peel off the payments associated to the uh, uh, bond B and, and bond C and so forth. So now, the last expression that I have written here is just a one-term expression. The numerator has three terms, and the denominator is this common denominator. So I can separate it into a three-term expression this way just by, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> taking each, each uh, term in the numerator and dividing by this, uh, this common denominator. Okay, let's look at that very first expression, uh, the very first term here. Um, so this, uh, uh, what's in parentheses here with a subscript cap A divided by the price of the portfolio. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to do this little trick, and, and I'm not going to change the ratio, but I'm going to insert. It's going to look more complicated, but you'll see why I do it in just a second. I'm going to multiply in and divide out a cap P sub A. Uh, and so you can see the cap P sub A's in the last expression would cancel off. And so I haven't, I haven't changed the resulting uh, fraction at all, uh, uh, but I just have this little tweaked expression. And so I could do that not only for the first term, but I could do that for the other two terms in that expression above it. Um, and, and so I could write, uh, I could write the, uh, the Macaulay duration of the portfolio this way. Now, why would I want to do such a thing? You might be a step ahead of me. Let me highlight in red what I, uh, what I want to focus on. And what's in red there, the first term or the first expression that's in red, uh, notice that that's nothing more than the than the Macaulay duration 
of bond A. And the second expression in red is the Macaulay duration of bond B. And the third expression in red is the Macaulay duration for bond C. And so what I get then is that the Macaulay duration of the portfolio is, uh, you know, the, the cap piece of A, the price for asset A divided by the price of the portfolio times the Macaulay duration uh, for bond A plus two other terms that look very similar. Notice also that the price of the portfolio is just the sum of the prices of the assets that make up the portfolio. And so uh, now if I look at then the coefficients of these Macaulay durations uh, in that last expression I've highlighted in red, the price of asset A divided by the price of the portfolio, of course the price of the portfolio is more than the price of the asset A. Asset A is just one of the assets that makes up the portfolio. And so what's in red, I, I could say the same statement for uh, the second two uh, expressions in red. And so the, the items in red then are all values that are um, that are uh, between zero and one. And if you add them up, notice if you add them up, you got a common denominator and the numerator uh, is just the sum of the prices of the assets that make up the portfolio, which is the price of the portfolio. So you, you get a weighted average. So the, the fact here, the punchline that I've just derived for you, the punchline is that the duration of a portfolio of assets equals the weighted average of the durations of the assets that form the portfolio with the weight associated to the duration of an individual asset, um, the weight associated to the duration of an individual asset being the ratio of the price of that asset to the price of the portfolio. That's a mouthful. It, it sounds like a lot, but it's really kind of easy to, uh, to apply. So let's go back to the problem and apply this fact with this particular problem. Uh, I got these uh, three assets that make up the portfolio. Notice that the price of the portfolio then will be the, the, the total price of the assets that make up the portfolio. In this case, it would be $10,000. And so then the, uh, uh, the, the Macaulay duration of the portfolio would be, then be a weighted average of the 9.5, the 9, and the 16, which is what we thought it would be. Now, what are the weights? The weights for the 9.5, which is the duration, the Macaulay duration of bond A, the weight associated to that would be the price for bond A, 2,000, divided by the total price, 10,000. The second weight uh, uh, for the uh, associated to the Macaulay duration of 9 uh, for bond B would be the price of bond B, 3,000 divided by 10,000. And then finally, the third weight would be the 5,000 divided by 10,000. And you go through the arithmetic, you'll find that that's a 12.6. So my answer there is, uh, is a 12.6. This type of problem I've seen several times on, um, uh, I've, I've had students tell me that this type of problem is in the, uh, the test bank of problems on the FM exam. So you wanna know how to do uh, a problem like this. All right, I'll see you in the next video.